Hi, I'm Brandon. And I'm Jodie Lee. And this is lesson four, Wednesday? Yes, Wednesday. Awesome. <laughs> it's hard to remember the days of the week. Um, but this week we've been um, talking about like your worldview and your perspective. And we've been kind of touching on some of the really like hard questions in life, right? Not ones that we don't have all the answers to. But um, we touched on a question the other day is kind of where did this come from like where did we start um how did we get here okay but that's only half of the important question um the other important question is like so what now right are we just stuck here is there something to look forward to um so basically just knowing how we got here kind of leaves us in a world where our biggest hope is that maybe we you know die old or don't die painfully and for me that's kind of not enough right i want something a bit more than that um so our view on creation or, or evolution or how we got here is important but our view on what happens next and redemption is also really important um and i want us to touch on john 1 verse 1 to 14 that's what the lesson said but we're just going to read um 11 to i mean 10 to 11 okay so you guys can follow along um and it says he was in the world, and the world was made through him, and the world did not know him. He came to his own, and his own did not receive him. And the word became flesh, and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, and the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Okay, so you might need to go reread that verse, because it's, I don't know, it sounds a bit confusing. But basically what it's saying is that Jesus was there when, like, he was part of creation, right? He was there as part of the, how did we get your question? creation but then he was also part of the like he's not going to leave us here any more question mm. or answer i suppose um because he became flesh he came here to live on earth so he understands exactly what we're going through he understands um every like step of the way and it says full of grace and he came and he died for us right so that we could go to heaven um so that's kind of what i get from this week's or today's lesson is just forcing us to take a look at what we believe about like after this world and the future and how important it is to think about that um so yeah did you also have some thoughts on uh yeah this question this lesson and jesus's first coming and second coming and all that type of thing i did and i think one thing i really like from the lesson is it highlights that uh, the first coming doesn't mean much to us if there isn't a second coming mm -hmm. and that we should really look at them uh, as one event mm -hmm. not just as two separate events but like one event in that they are joined in each other that the uh, second coming means nothing mm -hmm. if there is no uh, first coming Jesus coming back for us if no one paid for our sins if we don't have yeah. salvation he's means gonna leave us. yeah he's going to come <laughs> back and there's going to be no one yeah. You know, there's going to be only sinners and yeah. then uh, God's going to take For no one to heaven. Exactly, because we've all failed. So that, that doesn't help us very much. And the first coming doesn't mean nothing if he buys our salvation in the first coming, you know, pays for us our sins with his blood, but then never comes back for us. It's like you walk into a shop and you pay for a chocolate, but you never take the chocolate home to enjoy and eat. Not a good idea. What's, what's that chocolate like actually worth to you? Like yeah. you just wasted your money, but you never actually got to eat the chocolate. Yeah. So the first coming and the second coming are like very closely uh, connected. They are important with one another because if Jesus paid for our uh, sins with his death, then he must come back for us. So the second coming is an amazing thing. And um, yeah, it's very, very, very important that we look forward to uh, Christ's coming mm -hmm. and that we get ourselves ready for it, that we um, get our lives right with God and we make our peace with him and we look for forgiveness daily in all the ways that we could have wronged him. Yeah, so I think, yeah, if you guys, your challenge for today is to go and think about um, what you think about um, like where we're we going, what is there after that, and go and consider what the Bible's offering and what it's saying. Um, but you want to close in prayer for us? Amen. Yes. Glasses off. <laughs> Heavenly Father God, we want to thank you for this uh, wonderful day. We want to thank you that we can come out here in nature and uh, see you in the leaf, see you in the trees, see you in the running water, Father God. Truly, you are a God of creation. You have made all of these wonderful things for us to enjoy, Father God. Help us to uh, open our eyes and to see you in all other aspects of life, Father God. We love you and we desire you to come live in our hearts. Amen. Amen. Bye. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>